Oh, hey guys, it's me, uh, Alan, your favorite host of the Celebrity Gossip Show, uh, Starlinked Every Day. And man, do we have lots of juicy tidbits today about Justin Bieber's butt. Pfft, ah, April Fools, it's me, Keys. This is just our regular Nelly Daily Show. <laughs> I got, I got you so good. I'll let your heart rate settle down a bit while the intro plays. Man, what a fun day, huh? Yeah, so today is actually still March 31st where we are, so April Fool's Day is actually tomorrow for us, which is why we're posting something else tomorrow. Uh, I've said too much. Anyway, time for the tech news. Intel launched their first Optane cache SSDs this week, aimed at supercharging slow drive performance with super fast cache memory. But as the tech report discovered, while the new drives were priced at a very budget-friendly $44 for the 16 gigabyte version and 77 bucks for the 32 gigabyte version, they aren't supported by KB Lake processors likely to be in budget systems like Celerons and Pentiums. According to Intel, only KB Lake Core i3, i5, or i7 CPUs support the new memory. It's a bit of a baffling decision by Intel, as super budget system builders might as well simply buy a large SSD in lieu of spending more for a core processor. Release cheap memory, make it incompatible with cheap processors. It's almost like they want you to buy more expensive things. <laughs> Corporations, man. Speaking of corporations, JEDEC, the organization developing standards for DDR4 RAM, says that desktop DDR5 is coming soon. The new memory tech will be demoed this June and will be finalized sometime in 2018, bringing double the memory bandwidth and density of DDR4, along with some more power efficiency as a bonus. This doesn't mean very much for the consumer yet, sadly. DDR4 was finalized in 2012, but we didn't get it in desktop systems until 2015 when support was added to processors. So don't get too excited yet, all you people who get really excited about RAM. You're out there. And SpaceX has made space flight history, successfully launching into space and landing a previously used Falcon 9 rocket for the first time. The booster delivered a communication satellite to Earth's orbit before touching down on the same ocean barge it landed on previously, which is named Of Course I Still Love You. This marks the ninth time SpaceX has successfully landed a rocket back on Earth, six of which were on offshore barges. It seems a bit strange that this is the first time that one rocket has been used on two separate missions to orbit, and frankly, I don't know if it's worth it. Would you get more excited about driving a used car or a new one? Leave a comment. It's time for... That was Quick Bits in Binary. I'm not going to read it out because that would take too long, but now we know, so thanks for that. The boat. I don't know how to say your name. If the rest of you want to send me a Quick Bit submission, tweet me. Hashtag quick bits would, wouldn't hurt either. Intel claimed in a presentation that the 10 nanometer processor technology they're working on will bring up to a 40% performance increase compared to 14 nanometer processors. <laughs> yeah, sure Intel. Yeah, I think, I think we'll all just expect 15 to 20%, but you go ahead and, and shoot for that. You know, try your best. In other Intel news, the company launched its lineup of KB Lake Xeons this week, ranging from the E3 1220 V6 to the E3 1280 V6, which should be really exciting to people who are interested in Xeon processors. The new Samsung Galaxy 8's face unlock feature has been duped with a simple photo to the surprise of no one. Android's built-in face unlock feature was shown to be kind of untrustworthy as well when it launched, so can we just agree that faces probs aren't the best thing for unlocking? I don't know. A crazy wonderful human named Richard Browning has created a prototype jet suit thing that lets him hover like Iron Man, and it made me feel good about the world. Don't know about you. He's also got a heads-up display on his helmet. Really great stuff. And of course, every other company launched fake things today as part of April Fool's, so here's a quick roundup. Google released videos for Google Gnome and Google Wind. There's Miss Pac-Man and Google Maps. Lyft Mono, NVIDIA's G Assist, Fractal Design's Fur E Case, which is ridiculous. Lexus Lane Valet, Netflix Live, which has Will Arnett commenting on boring scenes. And HTC has added the ability for VR developers on the Viveport software store to include ads in their games, which can also track where you're looking in VR. Oh, that's not April Fool's actually, that's real. Well, 
News sources for all of today's stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description. You know, you win sums and you lose sums. So it seems like sums is pretty fair overall. It's balanced. Thanks, Lickshakalar. Got something you want us to say? <laughs> well, then just tweet us with the hashtag NCXYODOG. It's simple. Today is your last day to enter Fans with Benefits for March. In case you forgot, this month's prize is a G-Skill MX780 gaming mouse. Just comment on any video for March and subscribe to NCX Tech Tips to enter, and we will announce the winners winner on Monday, because we love you. <laughs> Don't you forget it. And guess what, guys? We got 24 more stories today. Ah, April Fool's got you. That's it for this episode of Nettling Daily. Thanks so much for watching. Click over here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over there. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. It'll make me really happy, and that's no April Fool. So. Love you.